Hello, I'm the Nostalgia Critic. I remember it so you don't have to. I really shouldn't have reviewed the Emoji Movie. Because that just opened up the floodgates for more current crap! I mean, I know a while ago I said not everything I reviewed had to be nostalgic, but I do like it to have some sort of nostalgic tie-in. After the Emoji Movie, though, everyone sent me requests to review another current abomination. Only this one was actually a big hit, led to a spin-off show, and even got nominated for Best Animated Picture. That means it's not only bad, but considering its audience, it's embarrassingly bad! Boss Baby got a lot of people rolling their eyes at the trailer the same way the Emoji Movie did, but somehow it made a big splash in a diaper filled of phoned-in urine. Even the idea of a baby acting adult seem old, with cartoons and a lot of Alan Smithy's later work. But somehow this grabbed a lot of people, despite a ton of negative feedback. Is it the confusing black hole of dumb so many have declared it to be? There's only one way to know for sure, sadly. Let's take a look at what generations from now will be embarrassed by with what we're currently embarrassed by. This is Boss Baby. The film opens in the Congo. Will I weirdly owe somebody money? As it turns out, our main character, Tim, is having a jungle fantasy. As the older version of himself, played by Tobey Maguire, explains. You see, I was seven years old, and back then, you relied on your imagination. If somebody told you I was just your average, ordinary guy, not a care in the world, or that I'm Michael Sarah in Molly's game, somebody lied. It's go time. Tim has a lot of fantasies about him and his folks. Too many fantasies, honestly. What the hell's even going on right now? You were only waiting for this moment. Even for a kid's fantasy, this... This is a little weird. The parents say he might be getting a baby brother, which gets him to thinking where babies come from. We immediately cut to where this movie came from, as the credits from Stork's role... Oh, I mean... No, this is Stork's. This is totally Stork's. It looks like any baby that laughs at getting tickled is given a family, and any baby that doesn't is thrown into management. Christ! I hope your tummy is sensitive because it describes the fate of your future! Is this a commentary on stupid or just a stupid commentary? Tim's baby brother, um, steps out of a taxi, suit and all, and surprises him. Look who's here. I had a million questions. Yeah, you and every human being watching this kid. He set up his office right smack dab in the middle of the house. He conducted meetings, lots Whoa, and lots what? of what? meetings. So I guess the idea is this is all told from Tim's point of view. I think. So his quote meetings are just him crying and the parents coming to his aid and he's not literally in a suit. He wears a suit. I know, isn't it cute? Or maybe he is. So wait, she was clearly pregnant earlier, but he arrives in a taxi? Why do I feel like that's only the beginning of my questions? Tim makes a big discovery though when he sees that his brother, now voiced by Alec Baldwin, is a pompous, angry, whiny psychopath. Say it with me. And I'm so is his, his character. character. The thing is, Baldwin is playing this less as a comedic character and more as a disturbed, even frightening presence. I've picked that bone enough. His trump is really good. I can't tell how intentionally scary he's supposed to be, though. Does his menacing delivery add to the comedy of it coming from a baby? Or does that just make everything even more unsettling? There's no place for Tim. Tim doesn't fit anymore. What about Tim? <laughs> Just imagine the dialogue from this movie coming from a more menacing role, like The Aviator. Do the math, kid. There's only so much love to go around. The numbers just don't add up. There's not enough love for the two of us. So keep quiet, stay out of my way, or there's gonna be cutbacks. Kinda creepy, isn't it? Tim naturally becomes afraid of the suddenly talking baby destined to destroy his life as he wakes up the next morning to... Oh, and here I thought the most shit-your-pants-worthy baby in the sun was from Teletubbies. Why has life given me two options on this? Tim starts talking to his alarm clock, which again leans towards him imagining all this. But why do his fantasies change so much then? Sometimes there's a style, sometimes there isn't, and we can't figure out what's real and what's not. Like, is the damn baby wearing a suit? Can the damn baby talk? It makes it harder to understand the comedy, and more importantly, it creates a damn-ass weird tone that nobody can get! You know, the kid playing Tim is the grandson of Ralph Bakshi. I'm starting to think a bloody riot of pigs and crows is in our not-too-distant future. Would it really surprise you at this point? He enters his fantasy realm, which again, we're not sure if we're always in or not, to try and get proof that the baby is talking to show his folks. Hey, screw the folks. Get us proof if he's talking or not. I have no idea what's going on. <laughs> now my pants are yellow and I have no idea what's going on. 
It looks like the parents are having a play date with other kids. That boss baby, which I'm just now realizing is his actual name. Parents can be such abstract dicks. Uses this as a meeting for other talking babies. Babies aren't getting as much love as we used to. Why? Have we been bad? No, we've been making films like this. I'd want to slap a baby after watching. Behold our mortal enemy, puppies. Aww. No, no! So bad enough at stealing from other movies, it'll be at the strangest parts of them. Now they have to rip off movies that weren't even arguably movies. It looks like Puppy Co, a competitor for Baby Co. Which if everybody knows about, why are the babies pretending not to talk? Why am I thinking I should really stop that? Is launching a new puppy, which the babies see as a threat. And if this new puppy is as cute as we fear, it could put the baby business out of business, baby. So the human race will stop because we're gonna start making love to puppies? I didn't think that was a question Boss Baby would ask me today, but I'm not seeing any other direction it's pointing me in. But they see Tim recorded their conversation and they try to get it from him. So... Let go, you little... Oh look, the kids are finally getting along. That's nice. <laughs> oh! If this is all a fantasy, why are we cutting from Tim's point of view suddenly? We've never done it before. If Tim is telling this story, is he just saying, and then suddenly, in reality, this is what was going on. It wasn't really a big action sequence, but the baby was still wearing a suit! The baby was still wearing a goddamn suit! This whole film is like a zen riddle of idiocy. If you solve it, you don't become enlightened, you just become dumber. <laughs> Boss Baby is tossed outside, only to end up in his office. This movie cares so little, even they draw attention to that inconsistency. Wait, how did you- Hand over the tape, Timmy. What do we care? We know Oscar voters never watch the movies they nominate. And Timmy gets strangely murderous. My proof! Oh, and I almost launched a baby into a car, but still my proof! Tim is of course grounded, which he sees as a prison, but Boss Baby interrupts his fantasy because... The Boss Baby is in the real world. Where they named their kids Boss Baby. And he has a chat with him. I'm on a mission from above. Are you the baby Jesus? Yes, I'm the baby Jesus. This movie's dumb. It's not that dumb. No! Take this. I want you to suck it. You suck it! No, it's for you to suck. Ugh, I'm not sucking that. Suck it. Okay, for a kid's movie, these are way too many variations of Alec Baldwin using the word suck. Ben. It's not where it's been. It's where it will take you. Well, that just sounds like his wedding proposal. Don't you want to know where babies really come from? So he sucks it and is taken to where babies apparently really come from. So this is where babies come from? Where'd you think? The Cabbage Patch? Magic fairies? Vaginas? Actually, they kind of address that. My parents told me that. What? Oh, no. It's disgusting. Yeah, it didn't sound right to me either. That's why I created this fantasy of denial. That's my most probable movie theory. So Boss Baby explains that he has to find out what this new puppy is so he can get promoted. But if not, he'll be given a formula that turns him into a normal baby, keeping him there forever. I will help you, but just to get rid of you. Deal. Here's to never seeing you again. Hey, it's what every parent said after watching this stinkhole. So Tim agrees to help Boss Baby find out info on this new puppy. It just so happens that's where his parents work, and it also just so happens it's Bring Your Kid to Work Day. You want to get a picture with Puppy Co. Pete? <laughs> <laughs> no thanks. It's official, whoever directed this should not have children or pets. <laughs> Look, it's how they make their Netflix show spin off. Nah, 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 they'd be covered in much more shit. They dress Boss Baby like a puppy and sneak him through the puppy door. Oh, what a cute little puppy! Ow! Yay! Again, I feel like that's just an average encounter for Alec Baldwin. They find the file on the puppy and switch it out, obviously parroting UHF. And a mousetrap is set. Literally, it's, it's a mousetrap. <laughs> hey, I can't get that thing past the marble slide. How did all this go off without a hitch? They're confronted by Puppy Co's owner, played by Steve Buscemi, named Francis Francis. Again, there's people named Boss Baby in this, nothing matters. And he reveals he was one of the big guns at Baby Co. 
He explains how he was cast out though, and now his new puppy creation that never ages will put them out of business. All he needs is the secret formula that keeps babies young. You brought me the very thing I needed to destroy baby core. No! You walked right into my trap! You'll never get away with this! Hey, remember when this movie started with where do babies come from? Who are you gonna tell, Tim? Your parents? I'm taking them both with me to Las Vegas. Ha! They never leave us alone. Except for this moment of them leaving us alone. The parents are duped into going with Francis Francis while his henchmen make sure the kids don't escape. They do escape though and call for backup. <laughs> This movie strangely has more baby abuse than I was expecting. Which I wouldn't mind, except it never ends the film! But it's too late as their parents are taken away. Wait, I thought we were getting close to the end here. I would have gotten to my parents if I didn't have to go back for you! Baby core is going to go out of business! You don't even know what it's like to be part of a family! Ah, oh, damn it! I thought this was the third act climax! It turns out it's just the third act I don't like you part! I wish I'd never met you! I wish you'd never been born! Yeah, you got me, movie. I guess they're just gonna hate each other from here on out. No character revelations here, it's just a half hour of sulking. Oh, wait, that's freaking me! He calls Tim on the white phone to say sorry, despite literally being across from him. Because like any kids, they can't do anything without their phones? And an Elvis impersonator gives them an idea for how to get to Vegas to save their folks. Though knowing this film, I wouldn't be shocked if it just was Elvis. Anything's goddamn possible. You got a buddy suit dressing like a plague suit and had an aura. There we go! Um, 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 um. Blue Sway Goo is a more convincing Elvis than you. What's the matter, Templeton? Um, my parents always hold my hand during takeoff. <laughs> yeah, all this stuff is fine, but taking off on a plane? That I need my handheld for. Creepy Baldwin baby obliges, and they land in Vegas and make it to the convention center. We're gonna launch a brand new puppy in every continent! We're going to take over the world! One heart at a time! That sounds intimidatingly adorable! The Forever Puppy! <laughs> Mommy? Has anyone noticed how weirdly sick this movie is? Mommy Dearest has more compassion than half these parents! Francis Francis locks the parents up and puts them in a rocket to drop puppies all over the world. Is it sad to say this movie's so strange this isn't sounding like a crazy plan anymore? <laughs> they release the puppies, but Boss Baby starts turning into a real baby and Tim has to somehow convince him to jump into his arms. Blackbird singing the dead of night All your life Yeah, eat your heart out ending of Coco. Same category. Tim gets him down, missing the rocket, and returns to his normal self. Boss Baby gets promoted, but of course is unhappy. So Tim offers him a job as his baby brother, which he of course agrees to, and is <sighs> dropped off via cab again. Tim, look who's here. Remember when I compared this to Storks? That was a documentary compared to this film. Oh, and here's their way around everything. It's a story he's telling his daughter. Is that a true story, Daddy? Well, sweetie, that's how I remember it. I hope it in no way questions everything, everyone, everywhere. Her baby sibling seems to be born, and not since Carrie has both a confusing and haunting twist ended a film. God, Christ, I have no idea what I just watched. The big problem with this film is, if it was all a fantasy, there's no real reason to be invested because we have no concept of its reality. The world keeps changing, but not in a stable way we can all latch onto, and therefore can't really enjoy. With that said, it is dumb, but it is surreally dumb. At least it's balls to the wall insane instead of your run of the mill boring bad. It's still got good animation, energy, and even a laugh here or there. But it isn't smart enough to create a concrete world, and it isn't dumb enough just to be mindless humor. It's just awkward. Mostly harmless, I guess, but still awkward. I guess the audience who wanted to see this just wanted to see Alec Baldwin as a cartoon baby do weird cartoon baby things. If you're the kind of weirdo who wanted to see that, and I guess there must be a lot of you, I guess this film is fine. But anyone looking for clever entertainment, or again, a film worthy of an Oscar nomination, is gonna find a massive load worth changing. I'm the Nostalgia Critic, and... What was that?
Are you the baby Jesus? Yes, I'm the baby Jesus. Hey, Doug Walker here doing the charity shout out, and this week we are doing Children International. Since 1936, Children International has worked to improve the lives of children around the world who live in desperate poverty. Their goal is to help them become healthy, educated, and self-reliant adults through one-on-one -on -one sponsorship. Among the regular benefits they provide are health and dental care, educational assistance, nutritional support, and a youth program designed to broaden their horizons and help them become leaders in their own communities. Like the world changers that support them, they are focused on making a long-term impact by helping kids all over the world. They have a bold vision of graduating healthy, educated, empowered, and employed young adults from their program so they can achieve the goal of breaking the cycle of poverty. If you look at their site and their YouTube page, you can see all the different ways they help all the various children, providing them the opportunities they rightfully deserve. Click on the link and start your journey to helping a child become everything he or she can be.